Okay, so um, you saying that um, resonates with me. I, I promise you, I, I think we were separated at birth <laughs> because we the same height. So <laughs> <laughs> we 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 literally um, my. My um my conversion was real. Mm. I told you I was sitting in the back row of my parents' church. No sermon was preached, no altar call. I'm a PK, I heard every sermon. Mm-hmm. I heard God. Mm. I didn't hear it. As a matter of fact, when I was 18 years old, yeah. uh my uncle came through. My uncle was a coach a preacher and he ran revivals. Um, and he came to our church and he basically scared everybody into mm-hmm. the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Right. But f- fear wears off. Right. Mm-hmm. He tried it. He tried, he tried it mm-hmm. on my brother and I, my, my younger brother is deceased. So, um, he preaches this sermon and then he says, uh, you two stand up. And so we stood up and we're, you know, we're standing. I got my two diamond stud earrings and you know, I, my whole Cali vibe was on. Mm-hmm. Right. Look at that. Look at you standing there with them earrings and things. If you died right now, you'd bust hell wide open. And we're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he was like, uh, uh, you need to give your life to Christ right now because there could be a bullet outside with your name on it. And you need to give your life to Jesus right now. And uh, you're already standing. And since you're already standing, you might as well come to the altar. Mm -hmm. But if you sit down, hell will be your everlasting home. (laughs) Not everlasting. I'm like, I'm going to start using that. Damn. (laughs) Like, what is happening right now? So I'm standing there. My brother Miles is uh, standing next to me. And, uh, you know, with a sibling, you can just make eye contact and have a whole conversation, right? So my brother's telling me with his eyes, hey, dog, I'm going to do whatever you do. Like, you go up, I'll go up. You sit down, I'm going to sit down. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bet. So I looked at him, and I sat down. Yeah. What, what was I supposed to do? Yeah. Like, I didn't hear God. Like, I don't, I'm sorry, I didn't hear God. Mm-hmm. So I sat down. And I sat down, obviously. And then his wife jumped up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The Bible says that the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Mm. And my mouth, mm-hmm. it's redeemed now. Mm-hmm. But I used to be a battle rapper, so that clap back, and I was a comedian, so mm-hmm. that clap back is ever present. Mm-hmm. I just have to let it. In times of trouble. In, it's ever. <laughs> It's a very present help, yeah, okay? Yeah. So I'm, you know, I got to let them zingers pa- pass me. I, I, but I was 18. And and so she said, the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And I said, well, that's the problem. I don't hear God's voice. I only hear y'all's. Mm. Mm-hmm. Hello. And they had to move on with the service. That was an awkward pivot. <laughs> but I was like... What you want me to do? So in First Thessalonians <laughs> chapter five. So saints, we just gone. He didn't talk to me for six months. Wow. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't want that God. Yeah. Year and a half later, two years later, whatever, in the same church, back row, no sermon. I give my life to Jesus. When I tell you, none of the desires I had, I tell people all the time, I gave my life to Jesus. I was a born again porn addict. Like that thing. I wish that thing would have. Looked at my hands and they looked new. Looked at my feet and they yeah. did too. It didn't drop off me like that. Yeah. But I remember, Jackie, the way I felt about it was different. Yeah. I could not enjoy it mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. There was no enjoyment. There was no pleasure. There was no comfort. There was no solace. Mm-hmm. I was convicted mm-hmm. of this being something that did not line up with God's will for yeah, my life. Yeah. yeah. And that conviction made it a fight yeah. yeah right these people ain't even fighting yeah I, I i think i think when people something that some people need to to know and hear is that you also have to manage the conscience right good. and so you come to faith the lord regenerates you gives you a heart of flesh removes your heart of stone but every time you make a decision for the flesh 
every time you make a decision against God's spirit, you're hardening yourself. Mm. And so that's why you can get to a point where you're no longer grieved by what used to grieve you. Right. Where you, you no longer feel convicted about what used to convict you. Right. And so it's like, how are we bump managing sin? How are we stewarding our conscience? That's good. You know, like yeah. moving in a direction where it stays soft. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it stays supple. Yes. You know? Like that's important. It's, it's, it's very important. Even with my boys, um, my... I'm always doing a heart check on them. Mm. If I discipline them and there there isn't that feeling of contrition, mm. if it's if they don't cry easily, mm. I'm always monitoring, is your heart still soft? Mm -hmm. Are you just doing stuff and just telling them, oh, I'm sorry, but are you really like this is this breaking your heart that what you're doing? Yeah. Cause you know it's breaking my heart and mommy's heart, or is it just like you just placating us to go in and you're looking for the next opportunity yeah. to not get you know let me do it in a way next time where i don't get caught yeah. as opposed to mm. i need to stop this behavior yeah okay so so um to that point that you made i'm not you know i mentioned james cleveland obviously james cleveland's not the you know the epicenter of yeah. sin right yeah. right in any stretch of the imagination I just know my mama went to his funeral and she saw the scene at his wake mm. and she was like this I mm. Mm. It, it was it was very very telling yeah. right but if we if we if we if we trace him and men like him forward mm. and these have been the disciple makers of the next generation then this is learned behavior yeah th th this is how you are you some of these people that where I have empathy is I don't believe anybody gets into ministry or gets into a relationship with God to embarrass him. Right mm -hmm. here. I am Lord. Use me yeah. to embarrass your name and mine mm -hmm. right here. I am Lord. Let me get to a church of 20,000 and then let me completely hurt everybody, mm -hmm. including your name. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm like, so, so if that's not the case, What's happening? Well, mm. some people are, they got this one thing on the side that keeps hardening their hearts yeah. slowly, 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 right? You got other people, they didn't stand a chance. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Jackie, they never stood a chance. That's true. They came in green. Mm. And they were, the way that it started for them is, this is how mm. this works. Mm -hmm. You can't go up in this denomination yeah. unless I got something on you. Yeah. I'll give you a story. I got stories for days. Okay. In this story, mm -hmm. it's a young man who's in a particular denomination that shall remain nameless. And uh, he's a rising star in the denomination. And he goes to, this is where this goes, girl. So, so he goes to preach at like a bigger jurisdictional mm -hmm. thing. And uh, he's excited. Like he's telling his wife, oh my goodness, baby. Yeah. I'm coming up in the denomination and da, da, da. his church is thriving is you know his reputation is being elevated within this denomination so he goes flies to this conference uh, he gets picked up by like you know uh you know an attendant you know the hospitality crew mm -hmm. whatever a deacon and, and some lady so they get you know he gets picked up from the from the airport goes to the hotel and uh goes to check in the lady comes with him to check him in mm -hmm. and then she was like well i'm gonna just go up to the room with you as well and just make sure but not into the you know he's not thinking go into the room right so but i'll escort you to your room but so they get to the room and he opens the door and you know he looks at the room oh, it's really good she's still at the door so he turns around thank you so much and what time would you be picking me up to go to the service and blah 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 and she gives him all those details and she's like well if there's anything that you need please let me know and he's like, okay, I, I absolutely will. Mm -hmm. And and she's like, anything that you need, just let me know. Mm -hmm. And he's like, absolutely. Amen, sister. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And so 6.30 is going to be the pickup. Right. And she looks at him and she's like. He ain't picking up the clues. He ain't picking up the clues. Mm -hmm. To ensure he does, mm -hmm. she says, if there's anything you need. Mm. Mm -hmm. now this sounds like a movie this sounds like no i believe it I've seen, I've, yeah right yeah. it sounds like this is a thing th this could never happen yeah. 
she shows, she pops out a titty Mm -hmm. and was like, if there's anything you need. And he got so shook, he he slammed the door in her face. So he crying in the room, <laughs> like, yeah. uh, right? He don't know what to do. He called his wife. I ain't do nothing, but this girl just flashed her titty at me mm-hmm. at the door. And, Baby, I promise you, I didn't try to do nothing to make this happen. Uh, so he going crazy, right? So then he's shook. Do I, you know, I got to get to the place, and I got to tell the bishop before uh, uh, she t- tell him that I tried to do something. So he's his mind's going crazy. Yeah. So he gets picked up, not by the same two people, gets to the to the to the church and they're in the green room and he's uh bishop uh i just gotta tell you this 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 lady she exposed herself to me and 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 i just want you to know i didn't do nothing she just you know i was just asking what time the service started and if there's anything you need and then this is the way she responded and he looked at her and he said "Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what happened Mm -hmm. and he said yeah i just wanted you to know and he said well it looks like you failed the test son And he said, I'm I'm sorry. He said, Do you honestly think that you're gonna go anywhere within this movement and we don't have no dirt on you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of these people don't stand a chance. Cause the culture that they were introduced to Jesus in. Mm-hmm is a perverted culture. Mm -hmm. So without a, almost an extraction, and I know the Lord will never leave somebody without an opportunity to get out. But this is why Lot had to get snatched up out of Sodom and Gomorrah. (laughs) Like somebody, the angels had to physically put hands on this fool to get him out because he was uh, good. Sometimes, you know, I think those are opportunities to ask the question of, what is God's will for me? Right. And so God's will might not be for him to have progressed in that denomination. It might be for you to stay low key and anonymous, you know, and and be a preacher at a local church with 50 people that nobody ever knows. And so I, I think we have plans for our lives that, you know, where we come against these, these blocks or these, all the things, but it's like, if God is for you, nobody can be against you. Right. So it's like, hypothetically speaking, if it was God's will for him to go up, he would have found a way around that without having to sacrifice his soul, I agree. his marriage, his children. And so I just, I just feel like stuff like that. It's just, it's just giving demon. <laughs> that's what that was given to me. Like that's literally the most demonic yeah, thing. Yeah. For like, sure. like oh, for sure. Jesus said like, no, you need to put the little thing around your neck. And right. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The millstone. Absolutely. Kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It's giving big demon vibes. So, so I don't like that. I don't like it either. And but I agree with you that that is that is the point where you have to make your decision. Yes. I value my character and yes. my integrity yes. more than my name. Yes. My position, my title. I'll walk away from all of this. Yes. If this is what this means, yeah. I must chunk deuces. And truth be told, the he was testing him, but so was the Lord because I've had opportunities, plenty of them. I agree. Where something is put before me and I sense a check in my spirit where it's like, the Lord doesn't want me to do this. Right. But I know if I do do it, I have opportunities. Right. I have money. Right. I have, you know, all of these things will open up for me. Yeah. And at the point that I say yes, when God wants me to say no, I've hardened myself. Yes, absolutely. And so I I, I think sometimes people in our sphere and space, we are being tested to say, do you love God more than anything? I agree. I abs- Jackie, I a thousand percent agree. I, I have been speaking, preaching, and in ministry for 27 years. Mm-hmm. I am not the greatest preacher out there. Mm-hmm. I am not the... Um, I, I, I know I'm not the most popular. Um, there's guys way more charismatic than me preach the paint off the walls. I can't tie their shoes in the pulpit. I just have character, integrity, and discipline Mm. that has allowed me to navigate my life in a way that I have, uh, walked around landmines they stepped on. Right. I'm not better than them. Mm. 
I just I just know that there were certain decisions I made for my life in ministry that kept me from stepping on the landmines. Facts. I chose my marriage yeah. over ministry. Yeah. Like if it was gonna come down to marriage and ministry, and Julia has said heard me say this ad nauseum, we'll be married twenty four years. Uh, May 1st. Praise God. Y'all should insert some applause. <laughs> Post applause yeah. for this one right Thanks here, so. right? So so we'll be married 24 years, May 1st, and legit, I always told Juliet, if it comes down to this marriage or ministry, I will be at CarMax. Praise God. Selling cars. Yeah. I'll be, I'm going to be saved anywhere. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So th- this ain't got nothing to do. If it, just know that I'm supposed to love you as Christ loved yeah. the church. So there ain't going to be no, mm-hmm. no fight over what I'm doing. But I've seen a lot, of, a, a lot of other guys put their marriage on the altar yeah. in the name of God. Yeah. Well, God, I actually heard a preacher. And, and their prayers are hindered because of it. Yeah. yeah. That's the scary part. 